Everyone always talks about the richest man in the world. But what about the women? On the Forbes list of billionaires, women make up a much smaller proportion compared to men, only 337 out of the total 2,668 billionaires. Despite their lower numbers, these women have accumulated a combined net worth of nearly $500 billion, showcasing their incredible financial success achieved through intelligence and determination. As of November 2023, the majority of the top 10 wealthiest women are from the United States, as reported by Statista. Have you ever wondered who holds the title of the world's richest woman? Stay tuned as we explore the lives and success stories of the wealthiest women, shedding light on how they've amassed their immense wealth and how they choose to spend it. Abigail Pierpont Johnson. Introducing our first entry on the list of women with substantial wealth is an American businesswoman who, despite her unassuming presence, holds significant influence. Abigail Johnson may not be a celebrity gracing the covers of top magazines, but her financial prowess easily places her among the wealthiest individuals globally. This 61-year-old billionaire's success story is rooted in her family's legacy in Massachusetts. Her grandfather, Edward Crosby Johnson II, founded Fidelity Investments, a multinational financial services corporation headquartered in Boston. Fidelity is renowned as one of the world's largest asset managers, overseeing approximately $11.8 trillion in assets. Before Abigail's grandfather passed away, he had amassed a considerable fortune of around $8 billion. Over the years, Abigail has not only preserved but significantly expanded this wealth. Taking the reins as the acting CEO in 2014, succeeding her father Edward Ned Johnson III, she has grown her wealth to an estimated $28.1 billion. Despite her immense success, Abigail remains a humble billionaire. She holds an approximate 24.5% stake in Fidelity Investments, while the Johnson family collectively owns a 49% stake in the privately held company. After her father's passing in 2022, Abigail assumed the role of chairperson in addition to retaining her positions as CEO and president, further solidifying her influence in the family firm. Abigail now commands full authority over a company with 45,000 employees globally, serving as the chair of its international counterpart, Fidelity International, and holding a board position at Breakthrough Energy Ventures, founded by Bill Gates. These roles mark a significant evolution from her initial position at Fidelity Investments, where, during her high school days, she began by answering phone calls. Abigail's journey to her current leadership role is a testament to her dedication, to overcoming the challenges associated with being the boss's daughter. With a 26-year tenure at the firm, she started in less prominent roles, steadily advancing to more substantial responsibilities. This extensive experience provided her with a deep understanding of the company's dynamics. As the current CEO, president, and chairwoman, Abigail has not only steered the company's growth, but has also accumulated substantial wealth. While Abigail's financial success might suggest an ultra-luxurious lifestyle, she remains remarkably private. Raised to stay out of the public eye, she lets the results of her hard work speak for themselves. Despite being the wealthiest individual in America's New England region, the sixth most powerful woman globally, and one of the richest women, Abigail Johnson maintains a down-to-earth approach. Opting for commercial flights over private jets and queuing up for rental cars like anyone else, she prefers staying off the general public's radar. Abigail's low-profile lifestyle doesn't diminish her generous contributions. Actively supporting various charities and art projects, she occasionally serves meals at a Boston homeless shelter she backs. The Johnson name, it seems, is not only synonymous with immense wealth, but also philanthropy. Mackenzie Scott Mackenzie Scott's journey to becoming one of the world's wealthiest individuals is intricately woven with her contributions to Amazon and her high-profile divorce from Jeff Bezos. Their union began in 1993. 
and in 1994, the couple embarked on a journey to Seattle, where they co-founded Amazon. Scott played a pivotal role in the company's early years, emerging as one of its first employees. Her involvement extended to crucial aspects, such as shaping the company's name, developing the business plan, managing accounts, overseeing shipping for initial orders, and even negotiating Amazon's inaugural freight contract. As Amazon flourished around 1996, Scott transitioned to a less hands-on role in the burgeoning family business. Opting for a focus on her family and literary pursuits, she maintained a relatively low profile. Despite her understated presence, Scott retained a 4% stake in Amazon until her highly publicized divorce from Jeff Bezos in 2019. The divorce left her with $35.6 billion in Amazon stock, securing her position as the third wealthiest woman globally. By July 2022, Forbes ranked Scott as the 22nd richest person globally, estimating her net worth at $36 billion. Within a short span, she ascended to the title of the world's richest woman by September 2020, and by December of the same year, her net worth soared to an unprecedented $62 billion. However, her immense wealth also brought a wave of criticism. Following her divorce, Scott underwent a notable name change, transitioning from Mackenzie Bezos to Mackenzie Scott, adopting her middle name as her new surname. In May 2019, shortly after publicly disclosing the terms of her divorce, Scott pledged to give away at least half of her wealth during her lifetime, exemplifying her commitment to philanthropy. True to her pledge, she made headlines by donating a staggering $40.4 billion to nearly 1,600 nonprofit organizations between July 2020 and November 2022. Notably, in 2020, she executed a $5.8 billion payout in charitable gifts, marking one of the largest annual distributions by a private individual to working charities. Her generosity continued in 2021 with a further $2.7 billion in donations. While Scott's philanthropic efforts have made a significant impact, her considerable contributions have led to a notable decrease in her net worth currently standing at $41.1 billion, 2023. Scott's influence extends beyond her philanthropy. She is also a published author, having written two novels that contribute to her multifaceted profile. Despite her substantial wealth, Scott is known for leading a modest and unassuming lifestyle. Rafaela Aponte Diamant Rafaela Aponte Diamant, hailing from Italy, has made an indelible mark as a prominent figure in the realm of maritime and interior design, accumulating a substantial net worth of USD $30.9 billion primarily through her involvement in the casino industry. In her notable partnership with Italian businessman Gianluigi Aponte, she holds a commanding 50% stake in the Mediterranean Shipping Company, MSC, the world's largest shipping line. Their journey in the shipping industry commenced in 1970, when Gianluigi, alongside Raffaella, co-founded MSC. The duo displayed remarkable entrepreneurial acumen by acquiring their first ship with a bold loan of USD $200,000, laying the foundation for the monumental success of MSC. Beyond her maritime achievements, Raffaella Aponte Diamant, recognized as one of the most dynamic self-made female billionaires globally, expanded her horizons into interior design. Her creative genius now takes center stage in the meticulously designed interiors of MSC Cruises, a testament to her multifaceted talents and business ventures. MSC, under Rafaela's influential stewardship, has burgeoned into the world's third-largest cruise brand. The company operates across diverse sectors, encompassing holiday cruises under MSC Cruises, inland logistics through Medlog, and port operations managed by Terminal Investment Limited. The Geneva-based brand, as highlighted on the MSC Cruises website, not only symbolizes Raffaella's commitment to excellence, but also leads market shares across strategic regions, including Europe, 
South America, the Gulf region, and Southern Africa. Susanna Clatton. Moving on to our next remarkable figure, let's delve into the life of Suzanne Clatton, a prominent German billionaire heiress with a fascinating background. As the daughter of Herbert Quant and Johanna, Suzanne was born into one of Germany's most influential families, providing her with a privileged start in life that many can only dream of. The Quant family played a pivotal role in rescuing the renowned carmaker BMW from bankruptcy, amassing substantial profits that transcended generations. Born in Bad Hamburg, West Germany, Suzanne later pursued a degree in business finance. Following her graduation, she gained valuable experience working for an advertising agency in Frankfurt before pursuing further education at the University of Buckingham. Suzanne earned an MBA in advertising from the IMDB Business School in Lausanne, solidifying her reputation as a budding businesswoman. Building on her diverse portfolio, Suzanne honed her business acumen in London with Dresdner Bank and later contributed her expertise to McKinsey & Company in Munich, as well as the bankhouse Royshell & Company. While her own hard work and determination undoubtedly shaped her success, Suzanne's ascent to the top accelerated after her father's demise. Inheriting her father's 50.1% stake in the pharmaceutical and chemicals manufacturing company Altana, Suzanne attained billionaire status. Additionally, she received a 12.5% stake in BMW from her late father, which increased to 19.2% after her mother's passing in 2015. Alongside her brother Stefan Quant, who owns nearly 24% of the car company, Suzanne assumed a role on the supervisory board of BMW in 1997. Leveraging her position and economic expertise, Clatton played a pivotal role in transforming Altana into a global powerhouse, earning the company a coveted spot on the German DAX list of top 30 companies. Presently, Suzanne is the sole owner of Altana a company boasting annual sales exceeding $2.5 billion. With additional stakes in Entrust and the SGL Group, her net worth stands at $24.6 billion, 2023. Despite the ease of finding information about Suzanne's net worth through a simple Google search, she has successfully kept her personal life out of the limelight. However, it is known that she met her husband, Jan Clatton, during her internship with BMW. Their love story began with Suzanne going by the name Kant during their initial acquaintance, adding an intriguing twist to their romance. The couple tied the knot in 1990 in Kidsbuel, resided in Munich, and unfortunately, parted ways in 2018. The union resulted in three children, and since her last brief love affair ended in a notable blackmail scandal, Suzanne Clatton has chosen not to actively seek new romantic endeavors, maintaining a level of privacy in her personal life, Gina Reinhardt. Now let's delve into the fascinating story of Georgina Hope Reinhardt, a prominent figure not only among the world's wealthiest women, but also holding the distinction of being Australia's richest living citizen. Renowned as an Australian mining magnate, businesswoman, and heiress, Gina has cultivated an impressive fortune throughout her career. As the only daughter of Langley Frederick George Lang Hancock, Gina faced a unique challenge when her father passed away in 1992. Instead of inheriting a fortune, she found herself grappling with a bankrupt estate and a financially distressed company, Hancock Prospecting, a mineral exploration and extraction firm founded by her father. Undeterred, Gina assumed the role of executive chairman and embarked on a journey to revive and elevate the company. Under Gina's leadership, Hancock Prospecting underwent a remarkable transformation, evolving into the largest private company in Australia. In 2018, the company reported an impressive revenue of $6 billion, a figure that has since climbed to $7 billion. Notably, Hancock Prospecting owns a significant stake in Hope Downs, an iron ore mining complex in eastern Australia, accounting for 50% of the profits generated by the four Hope Downs mines. 
With an annual production capacity of at least 30 million tons of iron, this translates to approximately $500 million flowing into Hancock Prospecting each year. A testament to Gina Reinhart's business acumen is her successful management of the Roy Hill Project's finances. Despite facing an 11% dip in her fortune since March 2022, attributed to significant drops in iron ore prices, she effectively repaid the USD 7.2 billion debt incurred for the completion of Roy Hill. Beyond her endeavors in the mining industry, Gina holds the title of Australia's second-largest cattle producer. Her vast portfolio extends across the country. Gina's strategic investments go beyond traditional sectors. She has made substantial contributions to rare earth minerals and the gas industry. Gina's financial acumen propelled her wealth to around $29.7 billion in 2012, surpassing Walmart heiress Christy Walton as the world's richest woman at the time. This achievement earned her a coveted spot on the Forbes list of the world's 100 most powerful women. Gina has consistently been recognized as one of the world's wealthiest women over the past decade, a testament to her intelligence and diligence. Apart from her business prowess, Gina is a notable philanthropist, channeling her wealth to support various causes close to her heart. She has played a crucial role in Australia's Olympic efforts and holds the distinction of being the largest non-government donor in the country's Olympic history. While philanthropy is a significant aspect of her life, Gina also indulges her passion for luxury. In 2021, she reportedly acquired the Webb House, a seaside home, for about 34 million Australian dollars, given her substantial net worth of 28.5 billion dollars. In essence, Gina Hope Reinhardt stands as a formidable force, not just in the world of wealth, but also as a multifaceted personality contributing to both business and philanthropy on a global scale. Miriam Adelson Meet Dr. Miriam Adelson, an Israeli-American physician whose journey to immense wealth and influence is as remarkable as it is diverse. Her trajectory begins with a Bachelor of Science degree in Microbiology and Genetics from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, followed by a medical degree from Tel Aviv University's Sackler Medical School. Dr. Adelson then fulfilled her mandatory army service as a medical officer in Nes Ziana, Israel, gaining valuable experience. Embarking on a career path focused on combating drug addiction, Adelson joined Rockefeller University in 1986 as an associate physician. During this period, her life took an unexpected turn when she crossed paths with Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire businessman with a vast empire, including the Las Vegas Sands Corporation a prominent player in the American casino and resort industry. Sheldon Adelson's net worth, estimated at around $30 billion, was significantly bolstered by the success of the Las Vegas Sands. The union of Miriam and Sheldon Adelson in 1991 marked a pivotal moment in her life. Following Sheldon's passing in 2021, Miriam inherited the majority ownership of the Las Vegas Sands, propelling her into the ranks of the world's wealthiest individuals. As the head of the gambling empire, she now controls more than half of the enterprise, which oversees multiple casinos in Singapore and Macau. Beyond her role in the business realm, Dr. Adelson serves as the publisher of Israel Hayom, a notable newspaper, and holds a position on the board of trustees at the University of Southern California. Her influence extends to wealth ranking lists, where she consistently appears among the world's richest individuals. In June 2021, Dr. Miriam Adelson claimed the 44th position on Forbes magazine's list of richest people, ranking as the fifth wealthiest woman and the richest Israeli, with an estimated net worth of $36.3 billion. In the latest Forbes rankings, she has ascended to the 36th position among the world's wealthiest, with her net worth reaching $32.8 billion. With substantial wealth at her disposal, Dr. Adelson has engaged in philanthropy, notably supporting political causes. 
Alongside her late husband, she contributed approximately $180 million to Republican campaigns and political action committees in 2020. Recognized for her influence on her late husband's political stance on Israel, Dr. Adelson received Honorary Citizenship of Jerusalem in 2018 and was later bestowed with the Presidential Medal of Freedom by former President Donald Trump in 2013. However, Miriam Adelson's impact extends beyond politics. According to Forbes, her commitment to philanthropy is underscored by contributions exceeding USD $1 billion towards medical research and drug discovery. Jacqueline Mars Jacqueline Mars stands as a titan in the world of confectionery, co-owning one-third of Mars, Inc., the illustrious candy conglomerate alongside her brother John Mars. The roots of this confectionery empire trace back to its founder, Frank C. Mars, who laid the foundation of the Virginia-based company in 1911. Mars, Inc. has solidified its status as a global powerhouse, renowned for crafting beloved treats such as M&M's, Snickers, and Milky Way, as well as venturing into chewing gum, Juicy Fruit, Orbit, Pet Care, Pedigree, Whiskas, and Packaged Foods, Ben's original, Susie Wan. According to Bloomberg, the company boasts an impressive annual revenue of around USD $45 billion as of April 2023. Jacqueline's journey with Mars Incorporated spans nearly four decades, commencing in 1982 when she assumed the role of Food Product Group president. Her impactful tenure continued until 2001, when she decided to step back and retire. Even after relinquishing her executive role, Jacqueline remained involved, serving on the company's board until 2016. Post-retirement, Jacqueline Mars embraced the lifestyle befitting a billionaire, and by 2019, Forbes acknowledged her as the wealthiest resident in Virginia, boasting an estimated net worth of $28.1 billion. Fast forward to the present day, her financial standing has only burgeoned, with a net worth now resting comfortably at $37.9 billion. With the luxury of time afforded by her financial success, Jacqueline has devoted herself to a myriad of interests and philanthropic endeavors. Her service on the board of the National Archives, past roles on the boards of the Washington National Opera, and the National Sporting Library at Fine Arts Museum, and her trusteeship of the U.S. equestrian team. Beyond her boardroom engagements, Jacqueline Mars is deeply connected to nature, owning a working organic farm preserved in perpetuity by the Land Trust of Virginia. Alice Walton Alice Walton, scion of the Walton family and daughter of business magnate Sam Walton, continues to hold a significant stake in the vast empire of her father's creation, the multinational retail giant, Walmart. As of January 31, 2022, Walmart, headquartered in Arkansas, reported a staggering revenue of USD $572.8 billion, solidifying its status as a retail behemoth on the global stage. Alice's journey began with a degree from Trinity University, followed by an initial stint at Walmart. However, her ambitions reached beyond the retail giant. After a brief period as a broker, she transitioned to roles as an equity analyst and money manager. Taking charge of investment activities for the family-owned Arvest Bank Group, Alice showcased her financial acumen. In 1988, Alice Walton founded Llama Company, an investment bank and subsidiary of Walton Enterprises, inspired by a llama her mother received as a gift. Despite the unique origins, the bank thrived for a decade, engaging in activities such as bond writing, asset management, and providing loans to businesses. Alice's leadership extended beyond the financial sector as she became the first person to chair the Northwest Arkansas Council, contributing significantly to the development of the Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport, operational since 1998. The year 1998 marked a shift in Alice's focus. 
As the llama company closed its doors, she redirected her attention to family, horses, and a Texas-based ranch spanning three $200 acres known as Rocking W Ranch. A prominent breeder of horses, the ranch added a new dimension to Alice's interests. Retiring with a substantial net worth of approximately $57.4 billion, she claimed the 19th spot on the list of the world's richest individuals and secured the second position among the wealthiest women as per the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. While recent years have seen Alice Walton drop to the third spot among the world's richest women, her wealth remains substantial. Despite residing primarily in Texas, Alice frequently visits Bentonville to indulge her passion for art. Her notable contribution to the art world is the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, established in 2011. Known for her discerning taste, Alice purchased a classic American painting by Asher Brown Durand for $35 million in 2005, exemplifying her commitment to supporting the arts. Beyond her role as a Walmart heiress, Alice Walton has etched her name in the cultural landscape through her philanthropic endeavors. She is the visionary founder of the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. This architectural gem, designed by the renowned Moshe Safdi, opened its doors to the public in November 2011. Crystal Bridges isn't just a museum. It's a sanctuary that houses a rich tapestry of artistic expression. The collection spans works from contemporary artists like Carrie James Marshall and Maya Lin to timeless masterpieces such as Asher B. Duran's Kindred Spirits, Gilbert Stewart's iconic portrait of George Washington, and Georgia O'Keeffe's Jimson Weed. Alice Walton's commitment to holistic health and education is evident in her establishment of a health institute in Bentonville, which eventually evolved into the Alice L. Walton School of Medicine in 2022. This institution reflects her dedication to advancing health care and medical education. Julia Koch Julia Koch, a prominent figure in the U.S. billionaire landscape, holds a substantial 42% ownership stake in the multinational conglomerate Koch Industries. This significant share of the family business was bequeathed to her, along with her three children, following the passing of her industrialist husband, David Koch, in 2019. Her journey into the realms of fashion and philanthropy began in the 1980s in New York. During this period, she played a pivotal role in supporting American fashion designer Adolfo and worked with distinguished clients, including former First Lady of the U.S., Nancy Reagan. This early experience in the world of fashion laid the foundation for her diverse and influential trajectory. Julia Koch's involvement extends beyond the family business. She assumes the role of president at the David H. Koch Foundation. Simultaneously, she serves on the boards of Koch Industries and the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, MSK, showcasing her commitment to both business and health care. Her recent appointment as a trustee of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in January underscores her dedication to the arts and culture. With a formidable net worth of $59 billion, Julia Flesher Koch consistently features among the top 10 richest women globally. Beyond her financial standing, she is recognized as a socialite and philanthropist. A stalwart in philanthropy, Julia, alongside her late husband, has made substantial contributions through the David H. Koch Foundation. Their donations, exceeding USD $1.8 billion, have been directed towards education, poverty alleviation, and various charitable causes. Notable among these contributions are USD 10 million each to Mount Sinai Medical Center and Stanford Children's Hospital for research on food allergies. Francoise Betancourt Myers. At the pinnacle of our list stands Francoise Betancourt Myers, a formidable French businesswoman and the reigning world's richest woman since 2022. Beyond her billionaire status, Francoise boasts a multifaceted persona as a writer, pianist, and committed philanthropist. 
Her staggering estimated net worth hovers around $98 billion, firmly placing her atop the ranks of the world's 10 wealthiest females. As the heiress to the L'Oreal beauty empire, a French personal care giant, Françoise inherited this colossal fortune from her grandfather, Eugene Schuler, the company's founder. While her mother, Liliane Betancourt, was the primary shareholder and previously held the title of the world's richest woman, Françoise assumed the throne after Liliane's demise in 2017. The inheritance of approximately 39.5 billion euros marked the commencement of Françoise's ascent to unparalleled wealth. In the subsequent five years, her fortune burgeoned by an impressive 50%. The post-2017 era witnessed an extraordinary tripling of Françoise's wealth, propelled by strategic investments through her family holding company, Tethys Invest, and the soaring valuation of L'Oréal shares. Presently, at the age of 69, Françoise leads a discreet life, deliberately avoiding the glare of the public eye. Her financial endeavors extend to diverse domains, including substantial contributions to scientific, artistic, and cultural projects. In addition to her corporate prowess, Myers serves as the president of the Betancourt Schuler Foundation, a philanthropic institution established in 1987. This foundation, dedicated to public interest causes, contributes significantly to France's advancement in science and the arts. Myers herself is a renowned philanthropist, exemplified by her substantial pledge of USD 226 million, a collaborative effort with L'Oréal, directed toward the reconstruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral, following the devastating fire in April 2019. In her Parisian abode, Françoise embraces a life characterized by simplicity. Averse to the extravagance associated with extreme wealth, she frequents public parks in France and refrains from utilizing private jets for her travels. Her passions lie in literature and art, providing a glimpse into the enigmatic world she inhabits, a golden prison, as described by those close to her, grappling with the weight of her immense fortune. While Françoise guards her privacy assiduously, her philanthropic endeavors through the Betancourt Schuler Foundation remain well known. Serving as its president, she annually bestows the Betancourt Awards upon approximately 14 budding researchers in the fields of science or medicine, fostering their postgraduate studies. The prestigious Betancourt Prize, Coupe de l'Olonne pour la Recherche Française, acknowledges public biomedical research laboratories, enhancing their infrastructure and working conditions. Notably, the billionaire heiress further extends her influence through Tethys Invest, an investment firm under her ownership. This venture supports diverse projects, with a notable mention being Elsan, France's leading private hospital provider. 